Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today I'm going to be teaching you how I like to win games on Live Oaks in my bat shot. So uh, what I'll typically do on this map is I will go up to C6 and from there I'll just get easy kills on light tanks who like to spot uh, by rushing like D4 area. Uh, so that's my plan. You're going to see I'm going to go to that. If no light tanks up here, typically you can just get shots on the D2. Um, like what will happen is heavies will cross into the city and they always pass through D2 so you can get shots on those guys. So you're going to see I'm going to go into this position. I'm just trying to get an early clip off and then I'll make a decision from there. Uh, typically TDs like to camp on this ridge right here. So um, you're going to have to be careful of that. If you're like shooting at a light tank right here and you get spotted, you're going to need to run away immediately because like, for example, they have a 183. Uh, that guy's just going to like one shot you the second you get spotted. So you're going to see I'm looking for light tanks, none up here. A TVP appears, but I don't really have good shots. So I'm not really going to take them. And then suddenly heavies get spotted on the mini map. So I have like the broad side of a VKB. Of course, I'm going to try to clip him out if I can. And so that's what I'm going to do right here. So you're going to see one of the shots misses. I've, I managed to track him. That happens. We've got a really good T49 who's able to spot him. Uh, he goes unlit, but you can still see since I'm an auto loader, I can just clip out that VK. And then from here, I'm just going to watch the mini map, see how the game unfolds. Maybe trying to like spot people, but really in the beginning of a game, when you're a minute into the game, it's sort of too early to be an aggressive in a paper tank like this. So you're going to see, I'm just going to watch things happen. There's a 183 who's spotted and I noticed that. Uh, and since they only have one TD, I feel safe pushing up. I know where their only TD is. If they had more, I couldn't be making this play. But because I read the enemy team lineup before the game started, I'm able to like take a calculated risk here. Now, one thing you're going to notice is when you're in basically every single game, if you try to make an aggressive play, there's always going to be one guy in the in the, your, the enemy team's base that you don't expect, and that's why going for Artie at like the first five minutes of your game isn't good because there's always one guy in like a heavy tank who's camping base. Uh, so you're gonna see that happens right here. Put shots into the WZ one three two. Um, don't know if that second shot hit, but the one eight three gets spotted, so I'm able to put shots into him. Uh, and soon, you can see on the mini-map right there, a T2065 gets spotted. So if I was in a light tank trying to make an arty run or something, that guy right there would have fucked me up. So that's why I don't advise going for arty, you know, in the first three or four minutes of the battle. So you can see I'm clipping. What I'm noticing right now is that we're losing the south. So my logic here is eventually the people in the south are going to flank our heavies in the city. And by that time, we want to kill everyone in the city so our heavies can, like, turn around and they're not surrounded. So I'm going to help out with that. Uh, this is a really important factor to winning games is you always need to win at least one flank if you have a, if you want a chance at winning the battle. What you'll typically find is if you're able to secure a flank, you'll typically be able to bring the game into like the late stages of a game uh, and give yourself better odds at winning and instead of like if you had just lost both flanks. And that's how raffle stomps happen, you lose both, both flanks. So there's an IS-7 behind me, I was full HP so I was okay to take the hit there. The T-10 uh, wasn't really looking at me so I could finish him off. And you're going to see I'm still full HP. Now I'm moving up to help the Jagdpanzer E-100 and then we're going to go back to base and play from there. So here we are, I'm just putting shots into this guy, I'm clipping. Uh, I need to get Artie safe, obviously they've got a CGC and my stats sort of mean I get focused on by Artie a lot. So you, I'm just going to hug this building here. Once I'm pretty sure I'm unspotted, I'm going to go and uh, spot for our heavies who are probably going to go back to base. So we've got a one-shot M103 and whatnot, I mean, nothing I can really do to micromanage. I can't micromanage teammates here, so the people who are going back to base, I'm going to help them. My goal is to win. Um, and kill that E5. Now one thing you're going to notice is that they actually have an M103 who's unspotted. Now I would have expected that M103 to be in like H4 or G2 or some other like campy position. It turns out he isn't. He's actually on the zero line but uh, this is this sort of like illustrates my point where you can't really commit very quickly in paper tanks. You have to watch the situation. You can see the M103's right there. I would never have expected that considering he's been unspotted for four minutes all game. Um, so yeah, there's the E5. I'm just gonna. My plan is to spot for the four uh, tanks in the city. You can see they should have really good shots in the M103 here. What you're gonna notice is that our heavies don't do a very good job of shooting who I spot. Like that M103 was in the open for a good five tenths, well maybe like five seconds. Uh, and realistically, he should have taken at least 500 damage, but no one even shot at him. So at this point in time, I'm like sort of <laughs> unsure right now. I'm getting shot at by a WZ-132 and a 54 mod 1. I mean, 
who cares really they're tier 8 tanks they're not doing anything to me what you're gonna find is that i want to yolo this e5 i'm able to clip him out but i don't really like i'm nervous because i think the m103 might be able to pressure me however we have a jagdpanzer u100 and etc etc et and i think it's sort of unlikely that uh, the m03 will be able to commit like onto me without dying effectively so you're going to see the second this e5 shoots i'm going to be positioning myself to get ready to rush him he shoots i rush him uh and i'm expecting that this jagdpanzer over here will just like be watching down the train tracks to shoot the m03 uh that isn't the case though and i nearly die right here so i'm going to push into the 1822 e5 he should be five shot kill um and I don't expect this summoner 3 to be yellowing me at all, but he is right now. You can watch him on the minimap. I'm able to Amorak that E5. That's what Deadeye is good for. Um, I repair my tracks because I get tracked. And somehow, <laughs> the Amno 3 was able to drive over the tracks with like four tanks in position to shoot him and not take a single hit right there. So that's my mistake. Sometimes it's a mistake to rely on your teammates. Uh, and I'd actually say often it is, especially when you're in a paper tank like this. Uh, so you can see I get very lucky and I'm able to go from there. Now, the game is pretty much won. I mean, the M03 is in a pretty shitty position. I'm going to be able to clip. I've only got heat left. Um, and I'm just going to be able to easily kill him right here. I'm going to use this bush here and finish him off. And, and then that's pretty much the game. What you're going to notice, though, is how... Um, timing really plays a big deal i would say the play that won us this game was us winning the city so obviously i helped with that i'm not taking full credit for it or anything but if you're in a situation where let's zoom out here if you're in a situation where um, i'll increase the map size they're coming in from one flank this applies to every single map in the game if they're going to flank your team and get behind them you need to make sure these heavies are able to turn around and like they don't have to deal with two tanks at once. So that's why it was really important for me to be able to win the city. Um, the reason I was able to make the play I did and come up behind was because they had no TDs stopping me. Um, so you sort of have to pay attention to that. Like that's why it's so important to like look at the enemy team lineup before you start a game because if you know where they are, you're able to prepare yourself and sort of predict what type of plays you can and cannot make. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm going to go make a sort of mini map guide. I'll go over that, put that in the description, and then we'll take a look at the end plates. Alrighty, so quick recap and sort of overall guide for this map. What I like to do on this on this map is I'll come up to this position, shoot people over here and, and potentially shoot TD so that a light tank will spot. Uh, from there, I generally decide how I want to play it. In this game, I felt I was able to move up to here, and that's because they had one tank destroyer and no light tanks in this area. Uh, so I was able to move up to here, clip out their TD, and then I felt safe coming around behind, and I had to do that so we weren't flanked. What will typically happen on this map is there will be like five tank destroyers and they will all sit in here. Um, what I will generally say is that this play that I made here will not generally work. What I prefer to do is once I've got my clip off right here, I will come over to this area and sort of help out with the south because that's a lot more of a fair fight instead of like trying to scout TDs camping in bushes with 8,000 alpha and whatnot. So, um... This game was an exception. I say that it's possible when they have low amounts of campers here and low amounts of light tanks. And obviously I was able to exploit that weakness of theirs. Generally what will happen is you want to come to here, shoot their light tank, don't take any hits from the camping TDs, uh, and then sort of play in this general area. What I will, like in this game, let's pretend I wasn't able to flank the city. What I would have done is I would have come to here uh, because at that time we were losing you know, this flank right here, there's nothing I could have done. I would have just tried to help like farm damage and, and prevent these guys from pushing up the zero line, hoping that we can somehow win the city. So um, hopefully that makes sense. I want to emphasize that this play will not generally work. It's not practical most of the time. The reason I feel this replay is really good though is because it shows that you need to win at least one flank if you want a hope of winning. If we hadn't been able to quickly secure this flank, the M103 and E5 would have just come behind us and farmed us. Like, honestly, like, it's it's a big deal. You need to clear out at least one flank if you want any chance at winning. Um, when you come to this position here, you're basically just hoping the team can win a flank. And I mean, let's be real, how 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 practical is that? Hoping your teammates will do something. So, um... You want to make sure you can win a flank when you're play like do your best to win at least one side of the map and then go from there use your creativity obviously like this position here that I, that i was in was extremely powerful i was able to swat the m103 and the e5 our team 
didn't do a very good job of shooting them, but generally you'll have teammates who have figured out how to left click. So um, hopefully this was helpful. Like any questions, I'm more than happy to go over over things and help you out because I realize this replay wasn't a perfect example, but I also feel like it, it gave a really good general idea of how you want to play maps so you can you know actually win games. So uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Key points is you have to win one flank, otherwise you're never going to win the game. And uh, once you've sort of won that flank, use your, your brain and try to come up with ways to outplay the enemy. In this case, I did that by just going here and spying them and then getting lucky and Amoraking the E5. So uh, yeah, let's go take a look at the end plates. Alrighty, so as you can see, that was the Mastery Badge, a ton of other medals, I don't really know what they're for. Uh, high Caliber, Tank Sniper, etc, etc. In the end, we did 8,470 damage, 4 kills, 1,328 base XP. We ended up making a killing on credits, 91,000 credits. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This was my highest damage bad shot game I've ever done, so... Um, Take it for what it's worth. I hope it was helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button, and I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.